Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. Mining Weekly editor Martin Creamer joins me today to unpack the latest in the mining industry. Welcome, Martin. Thanks, Ashley. Can you talk to us about how expanding bulk mineral exports can increase employment to 500,000 direct jobs? You know, when we're talking about bulk mineral exports, you know, we're talking about coal, talking about iron ore, talking about manganese, we're talking about chrome, talking about ferrochrome. Those are the bulks. And if you look at the potential for us to produce those and the potential for us to export those, even with port capacity, with a click of a finger, we could be doing much better. We could create another 40,000 jobs. I know it's ironic to talk about that during a strike, mm. but I think it should be spoken about during the strike because one of the issues raised by the transport workers was that you know they're not only burdened with inflation at the moment, but they've also got indirect family support that they've got to give. They've got to spread it out because there's so much unemployment. Well, this could create more employment. What the union should be looking at now is how they can actually make a contribution themselves because it's no good just taking in this environment. We see that um, the situation is probably worse than we've ever had mm -hmm. you know, since 1994. And unions should get to that attitude where during very difficult times, you know, they must cooperate. And when we come out of those times, th then they must start really pushing because that's when they will get mm. because there's, there's money to give them. But there's not money to give them now. In fact, we are doing badly. I mean, if you look at the coal line, and I see that Riches Bay Coal Terminal has a name plate capacity of 91 million tons. So in other words, they're saying to us, we could push 91 million, three, and how many are going? 70 million tons. So, you know, the rail can only do 78 million tons. I mean, how can a state be proud of itself when it cannot even match the port capacity? I mean, the, you know, there's serious lack of contribution by these state-owned contributions, and, and we know what has happened there. There's been state capture. So I think everyone in South Africa is is probably looking at this and thinking the bulk of South Africans are doing worse. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we're all not doing like we used to do. Uh, maybe in downturn, certain companies, liquidators and everything do better. But generally, you don't do well. We're not doing well. The bulk of South Africans are not doing well. We're all having to pull in our belts, tighten our belts. And so it's not really the time for these unions to play hardball. So hopefully if they are going to play hardball and we really have to pay beyond inflation which i think we shouldn't go beyond the inflation rate you know <coughs> perhaps they could look at a commitment of how they could make sure that we hit that capacity which is there uh, every bit of m bulk commodity that goes out there we're getting funds in mm. and uh, roughly 19 percent of that money coming in from that goes to the tax goes to the fiscus, so at least the fiscus has got more money to do things, and everybody should be looking at the big picture, not the small picture at the moment. Now, South Africa takes almost a year to issue, issue a prospecting right, while Botswana does <coughs> it in 40 days. See, that's another thing that could actually speed up employment here. You've got a very prospective South Africa. It has been badly explored for so long. There's new technology now that is so different. You know, you get these people that are really mathematicians sitting at their desk and they're working out where everything is. And then the geologists are going in. It's not the geologists going in and searching and looking at antils and spending a fortune of time. They're doing things much better, quicker, with flyover. So we could actually benefit from that now. But what is holding it up? Red tape. You know, the, the time that it takes to go through the system here is like over 300 days. And then sometimes they take 300 days to tell you you're not getting one because someone else has got that spot. I mean, how backward are we? Whereas in Botswana, you know, they give you the license in, in 40 days. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they can tell immediately on the cadaster who's there. Now, I remember this began many years ago and it began, I think, with a horrible tone about it. We were sitting in an auditorium, and for some reason, a top lawyer was there, journalists were there, I was there. 
and the speaker did not know there were journalists there. He did not know there were lawyers there. And they had turned down the lights of this auditorium. And he was bragging and thumping his chest how he wasn't l allowing these expiration applications to go through. He was putting them in his bottom drawer and saying proudly, and they said, he, they accused, he said, they accused the department of being totally inefficient. And he was saying, yes, yes, it's inefficient. In the meantime, he was making sure that these expiration permits were not getting through. My recollection of that person was that he wasn't even a South African. And also my recollection of that person was when Mining Weekly published the story, he came through saying he's going to sue us. So we sent him the clipping and we said, didn't you say this? Because we've got it on tape and we were there. We never heard from him again. And also the particular lawyer concerned, wow, you know, he wanted to really climb in. But nothing has happened since then except that our whole cadastre system has just broken down. Now, you can get another one off the shelf. What is the delay? You know, delays, delays, delays. There just seem to be people who don't want to do anything. Because if you wanted to do something, you'd get it done. Mm. Lastly, Martin, Angle Gold Ashanti aims to reduce its emissions by 30% by 2030. You know, I was very glad that these mining companies are putting this out. And they're putting it out robustly. And although, you know, everybody says, oh, you've got till 2050, you know, what you worry about, they are wanting to do it now because it's a very important issue for the planet. You know, we can see what these um, greenhouse gas emissions are doing. We can see the flooding. We can see the droughts. The mines can experience. They know what's going on. They want to not be accused when they go to raise money on a mm -hmm. stock exchange of actually destroying the planet. And the bigger investors, you know, with some of these companies like Anglo Gold Ashanti is also listed in New York, not only Joburg, you know, they're going to say, hang on, guys, you know, are you destroying the planet? No, oh, no, we're not going to invest in you because there'll be a time when someone's going to come at us mm. and say, you know, we are going to be sued. So it's a situation where it's such an opportunity, as Minerals Council South Africa chairperson, you know, said uh, the other day, President, if this is the big opportunity for us. The fact that there's decarbonization being accepted by the whole world gives mining companies with the metals and minerals that can help that decarbonization a massive opportunity. But of course, they've also got to do things properly. So you can see Anglo Gold coming through. Then a lot of other companies have tightened up as well. They're talking about 30% by 2030. And you know what these mining companies do? Some of them are headed by guys who really move fast. They'll get it even sooner. So I think it is a good example that they're showing, but they know why they've got to do it. Uh, you know, there are going to be repercussions if they don't do it. And also, a whole economy here needs to look at it, because if we're going to have a trading situation, if we start exporting goods that are not seen as being made with clean energy, we are already hearing they're not going to pay us the mm. price. They're going to put a tariff on that. You know how that hits your foreign exchange. We already we know it now with the transport strike, how that can hit you. So I think that this is an opportunity people should seize. And uh, I'm glad that uh, Anglo Gold Ashanti highlighted it this week, as others have done, I must say. Thanks for speaking with us, It's a great pleasure, Stephanie. That's it for today. Join us again next week for more news analysis on the local and global mining industries. To subscribe to Crema Media's Engineering News and Mining Weekly, please email subscriptions at cremamedia.ca.za.